Hello. Several years ago, I came to the conclusion that I will never be a domestic goddess. I've got the famous Nigella Lawson book, and I'm not bad at cooking a meal or even a cake. But the tidying and cleaning and making sure that everything is just so is just not me. I do what needs doing, but there are so many things I'd rather be doing than making sure that the house looks picture perfect and like a show home. Discussions about today's gospel reading, about Jesus visiting the home of Martha and Mary, often end up presenting a very polarised view of how we should be with God. With the people who were the doers, the activists, being told that it would be better if they were more contemplative and sat still praying more. But the passage is so much richer than that rather simplistic understanding would suggest. Martha, Martha might appear, understandably, to be rather annoyed that she's doing all the work in the kitchen while Mary gets to relax chatting with Jesus. What is going on is actually far more radical than that, far more scandalous than that. That's what she's complaining about. Mary isn't shirking or just shirking from doing her chores. She has gone into the male space. Sitting at the rabbi's feet would be where men would have sat, where they went to learn, where they went to study the scriptures to learn more about God, where they went um, to learn how to be a rabbi themselves. And women didn't do that. Women and men didn't mix unless they were part of, of the same family. The women would stay together in the domestic space and the men stayed apart from them. By affirming that what Mary was doing was good, Jesus upset all the cultural norms. He upset the expectations. He showed that women need to learn about God just as much as men did. He showed that women should learn from him and follow him as much as the men did. Telling Martha that Mary was doing the right thing would have been shocking to those who were there. Last week's gospel reading was shocking and unsettling because it was the Samaritan rather than the priest or the Levite who helped the man in distress. This time it's shocking and unsettling because Jesus praises a woman for doing what a man would normally do. Those present and those who initially read the gospel account would have fully expected Jesus to send Mary to help Martha get the meal ready. But he doesn't. Instead, he says that Mary has chosen the better option, focusing on him rather than the other stuff. Martha isn't wrong welcoming Jesus and the disciples into her home. They would have needed somewhere to stay. They needed feeding. And she was providing hospitality for them. A very good thing to do. But in her busyness, in her focus on all the other stuff, she forgot to focus on spending time with those that she was welcoming. She forgot to spend time with Jesus. The repetition of her name when Jesus speaks to her shows a gentleness, a fondness to Jesus' words. Yes, it is a rebuke of sorts, but it's a gentle one and an encouragement to follow Mary's example, to step away from the worries and distractions and focus instead on being in the presence of God. I suspect that 2000 years on, there are even more things to distract us than there were when Jesus visited Mary and Martha. And I know that lots of us are worrying about many things. The past few years have been tough for everyone and that may still be the case in some ways for a while to come. But Jesus invited Martha and he invites us to step away from the distractions, to move our focus away from our worries and instead focus on God. Over the next few weeks, we may well have a bit more free time than we normally would. Often the summer months take on a different pattern and operate at a different pace. Not for everyone, I know, but we might have an opportunity to slow down and deliberately step away from the distractions, even for a few minutes, and to focus ourselves on God through praying, through reading the Bible, through stopping to enjoy the beauty of God's creation, through focusing on our breathing, 
I'm thanking God for the gift of life. It's not wrong to be busy. It's not wrong to be the kind of person who likes getting things done, who likes to be busy, who likes doing things. We need people who do things in the world, don't we? Even being someone who struggles to be still isn't wrong. Some of us are just wired that way. What Jesus is reminding us of in the story of Mary and Martha is that we need to be careful that that busyness doesn't distract us from God's presence. You can be incredibly busy and still recognise that God is with you. We are all different and we are all wired differently. But if we're honest with ourselves, at times, in different ways, we all let ourselves be distracted away from God. Sometimes by seemingly good things. But let's commit ourselves to making an effort to refocus. Set aside some time to be with God, to enjoy God. You'll know what helps you enjoy God's presence. Which Bible passage? Which music? What kind of setting or environment? Do whatever works for you, but be deliberate about it. We don't know what happened after Jesus' words to Martha. Did she choose to return to the kitchen in a huff? Or did she go and join Mary? Whichever she chose, she did have a choice, and so do we. Mary was blessed by her choice, not only in the affirmation she received from Jesus, but in what she experienced as well. May each of us make choices through which God can bless us richly this summer as well. Amen.